Know thyself, know thy enemy. A thousand battles, a thousand victories. Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. To fight and conquer in all our battles is not supreme excellence, supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. The general who wins the battle makes many calculations in his temple before the battle is fought. The general who loses makes but few calculations beforehand. There has never been a protracted war from which a country has benefited. If you are far from the enemy, make him believe you are near. Quickness is the essence of the war. Hence the saying, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, your victory will not stand in doubt. If you know heaven and you know earth, you may make your victory complete. He will win who knows how to handle both superior and inferior forces. To see victory only when it is within the ken of the common herd is not the acme of excellence. The good fighters of old first put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat, and then waited for an opportunity of defeating the enemy. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in the attack. There is no instance of a nation benefiting from prolonged warfare. Pretend inferiority and encourage his arrogance. If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight, even though the ruler forbid it. If fighting will not result in victory, then you must not fight even at the ruler's bidding. He who is prudent and lies in wait for an enemy who is not, will be victorious. A good commander is benevolent and unconcerned with fame. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. If ignorant both of your enemy and yourself, you are certain to be in peril. Quality of decision is like the well-timed swoop of a falcon which enables it to strike and destroy its victim. Secret operations are essential in war, upon them the army relies to make its every move. Victory usually goes to the army who has better trained officers and men. When envoys are sent with compliments in their mouths, it is a sign that the enemy wishes for a truce. For them to perceive the advantage of defeating the enemy, they must also have their rewards. It is essential to seek out enemy agents who have come to conduct espionage against you and to bribe them to serve you. To give them instructions and care for them, Thus doubled agents are recruited and used. If our soldiers are not overburdened with money, it is not because they have a distaste for riches. If their lives are not unduly long, it is not because they are disinclined to longevity. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness, thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate. Know your enemy and know yourself and you can fight a hundred battles without disaster. Art of War teaches us to rely not on the likelihood of the enemy's not coming, but on our own readiness to receive him, not on the chance of his not attacking, but rather on the fact that we have made our position unassailable. He who knows when he can fight and when he cannot, will be victorious. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. 
the general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service for his sovereign, is the jewel of the kingdom. In the practical art of war, the best thing of all is to take the enemy's country whole and intact, to shatter and destroy it is not so good. Walk the enemy's power, force him to reveal himself. Prohibit the taking of omens, and do away with superstitious doubts. Then, until death itself comes, no calamity need be feared. Hence the general is skillful in attack whose opponent does not know what to defend, and he is skillful in defense whose opponent does not know what to attack. Now the reason the enlightened prince and the wise general conquer the enemy whenever they move and their achievements surpass those of ordinary men is foreknowledge. Of all those in the army close to the commander none is more intimate than the secret agent, of all rewards none more liberal than those given to secret agents, of all matters none is more confidential than those relating to secret operations. If you know the enemy and know yourself you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. All men can see these tactics whereby I conquer, but what none can see is the strategy out of which victory is evolved. Regard your soldiers as your children, and they will follow you into the deepest valleys, look on them as your own beloved sons, and they will stand by you even unto death. If your opponent is of choleric temper, irritate him. The opportunity to secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is a provided by the enemy himself. Confront them with annihilation, and they will then survive, plunge them into a deadly situation, and they will then live. When people fall into danger, they are then able to strive for victory. For to win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. Thus it is that in war the victorious strategist only seeks battle after the victory has been won, whereas he who is destined to defeat first fights and afterwards looks for victory. Thus, what is of supreme importance in war is to attack the enemy's strategy. The enlightened ruler is heedful, and the good general full of caution. It is only the enlightened ruler and the wise general who will use the highest intelligence of the army for the purposes of spying, and thereby they achieve great results. If we know that our own men are in a condition to attack, but are unaware that the enemy is not open to attack, we have gone only halfway towards victory. Sun Tzu